did. All right, I pushed record. Yay. All right, welcome to Prima Live and or Live with Prima. And um, this is the project we're going to be working on tonight. This is my uh, little mixed media album from Donna Downey, the fabric album. I got to center it. There you go. The strong, be strong with art book. Yay. So um, we're going to be doing lots and lots of techniques tonight. And um, if we have time, I'll do, I'll show you a couple techniques inside the book too. If I'm sure we'll have time because the cover doesn't take all that much. Donna Downey script album. Thank you, Miss Moderator. And I'm Jen Matat, if you don't know who I am. Um, and I am going to be teaching you this class tonight. If you have any questions, um, I'll try to remember to look up at the chat so I can answer, or Carrie can answer, because she'll know lots of it. Um, but I think we'll get started. Um, I do want to mention before we get started about the Prima Art Venture with uh, Lisa Gibbons, and that's really cool. It's going to be in January 18th through the 20th, and it's in California, Palm Desert, California. It's way far away from me because I'm over here with Miss Carrie on the other side of the United States, and um, it is going to be a blast. And I, I'm looking at all the people that are going to be there with um, instructors that are going to be there and you're going to have Heidi Swap and Anna and Nick and Julie and Janine and Marion um, and there's just so many workshops and make and takes um, lots of other people that are going to be there for make with make and takes doing make and takes and it's pretty reasonable if you're local that's a really good price um, unfortunately I have to work in January <laughs> I'm an art teacher and they don't really look kindly on me, um, you know, taking time off to fly out to California. I wish I could. That'd be awesome. But my kids would miss me, so I have to stay here. We're on the right side. We're far east. On the dark side. That's it. Yeah. It is dark. It's dark at like 4.30 here. It's crazy how it gets dark so soon. Yep. And Carrie just posted the link. And you should check it out if you're interested. It's going to be a lot of great things a lot of great projects and art techniques and um, lots of goodies, lots and lots of goodies for what you get. So it's awesome. So it's a great deal. Check that out. All right, I'm going to pan down because you don't want to look at me the whole time. You want to look at the artwork. And I'm going to show you what the um, what materials we're going to be using. And I'll probably be moving things behind me so that I have room. But I'll pan down here. Try to move things around. Oh, one of my flowers just fell off. So here's the book. <clears throat> this is the done book. It's done. It's not quite done. It has a lot of pages inside. Hey, Sherry. Yeah, Syracuse. Yeah, that's where we are. Um, so we have lots of product on the front cover of this. My camera will adjust. And we're going to be using Faber-Castell products to the, make the color on the cover and um, alter it. And we're going to be using modeling paste and gesso and um, the Stamper's Big Brush Pens from Faber-Castell. So we'll be doing some stamping with the Prima stamps. And um, I'll show you the inside in a minute. But this is the book. This is what it looks like in the package. It's from the Poppies and Peonies um, line from Donna Downey Studios. And this is an awesome, this is a great album. So I'm going to take it out and show you. Oh, so many locals on there. Hello. There we go. And you can see, this is great. They're like, it's a fabric. It's kind of like a muslin, I think. And, but it, it's lined with the canvas back. And I love her little buttons that she uses to attach them. And there's what it looks like inside. So we might have time, we're going to have time probably to do the, the tag in here. And maybe one of the pages. 
as well. I love this. All these little pages and how cool she picked these different materials to be in here. This is a real smooth printed paper. It's got um, definitions on there. All different definitions. I know it's all assembled. I love it. And this is one of my favorite ones. Look at that dotted. It's like the um, drywall tape that I get from Lowe's. But it's a whole sheet of it. Oh, I love that. So it's all bound in there. Here's the middle. All nice and stitched. Oh, my camera's unfocused. There we go. Yeah, these are really cool. So this is a great album. Yep. Um, and yeah, they're all ready to be altered. So I love these albums. And I'm not quite done with the inside of the book um, yet, but I've been playing around with different techniques in here. So we'll do a few of them tonight. Okay, so that's one thing we're going to be using. And we're going to be using the Craftsman line. This is my favorite line from their summer CHA release. Um, this is the engineer page. Oops, sorry. Let's see if I can get it. I may have to just pan up a little. There we go. And this is the one where it has all the the words that you can cut out and has um, two big blocks here. It's got a nice back for scrapbooking and collage pieces here. We'll be using the the tags and this piece, I think. Yep, inside, we'll be using that one. It's It could be masculine, yep, very steampunk, and um, but it could be feminine too, you know, very artsy. Yeah. And then here's the, this was widgets, the widget page. I love the orange. Really into orange right now. So I've been using that a lot. And the back is this navy blue with some text and gears. It's fun. That's a fun page. We're going to use a little bit of that. And this one, Carrie used this one on a layout too. She cut out, I kind of got the idea from her actually, cutting out some of the gears. They're perfect for a little bit of fussy cutting out. That's a, they're great for that. And then on the back, I love this paper too because um, you can cut up these into little uh, six by six squares. Perfect. Yep, perfect for layering. This one is called Gear Up, obviously. It's a good name. I like how they named them. And along with that, we are going to use the... Um, stamp set, cling stamps from the Craftsman line. Sorry, my glare. I'm trying not to get the glare. And I'm going to be using um, some of the gears, but I'm also going to be using this one, the pointer hand and the train. So, and uh, oh, I got my bucket here. Of course, we have to have some bling. Bling bling. This is the Say It in Crystals, the little mini crystals. This one is the Craftsman crystals. And they're kind of like a, they're, they're the crystals, but they're kind of grayish color. And this one, Say It in Crystals, these are the, I love these little, the little crystals around the crystals. And these are kind of black and gray. And got lots of goodies for you guys. And this is fun. This is the journaling card, note card set. And in here you get lots and lots. So you can use these for all sorts of fun projects. We're going to use this one on the, so I'll leave that one out. But they have, um, I think there's four of each in here. Yep, four of each. And they got, they've got quite a few designs. Look at these shapes. They're awesome. Great for journaling or just layering. These have, like, have these little bike, you know, chain gears around it. Um, I like to layer them on the page behind photos or um, just as pieces of elements. That's what we're going to use it on here on the front cover. 
so I cut it actually and spread it apart so you could use it as a little element that peeks out behind. So you could do a lot more than just journaling on it. You could use it, make tags out of them. So there, you got to see all of those. Those are fun journaling set. Like I said, the Craftsman line was my favorite line. So that's that one. And we've got, I've got more. There's more. These are some of the flowers we're going to be using. These are the Craftsman um, Prima Flowers. Don't know, I don't remember. Pearls? Pearls? P E R L E S. Pearls. Yeah. So, those we'll use a few of those. Um, we're going to use some of these resist canvas. These are the gears. Clocks, gears, and keys. These are very cool. I love that. Yep. Yeah. The entire line. Awesome. And this is the, um, these are the where I'm going to make the title out of. And you can, there's two words in here strong and perfect. So you can, or you, I guess you could make other words out of it if you had the, the right letters in there. And they also come with some note cards. Um, journaling cards in there too. There's I think two two different designs in there. Yeah. It's a layer. And of course, oh, wood buttons. I love these little wood buttons. Look at these. They are like they've got the little gears and they've got some of the screen printed images from the papers on there. You can see those pretty well. These are great. Love them. Fun. Oh, oh, oh. Did you see these? I used the little one on little on this one, but um, I did use these on another set. So you can see I've already swiped one out of there. But these are the little light bulbs. Junk junkyard findings. Small typo bulbs. These are the typo bulbs one. I know I'm missing one. I took one out and used it on another one. Another project. Alrighty. And finally, well, maybe not finally. I may have a few other things. But this is uh, the Junkyard Findings, the gears. These are my favorite. Oh, love these. These are so nice. I've been using these a lot. I know. I know they're mine. I love them. I hoard these. I hoard them because I love them. So I have to use them more. I did use them on another project in um, the um, Prima Place magazine for December. If you haven't signed up for that digital copy, you should do that. You should sign up because that magazine's awesome. There's a lot of great ideas. And it's the winter, the December one is all like Christmassy. So I'm going to put these in my bucket. Oh, we're also going to use the Prima Press inside the book. Inside. Create, I've spelled out. But if you don't know how to use this Prima Press, these are like little Legos. They look like they're perfect little stamps. And when you spell out your word, you can see them before you, like as you're stamping them. You can see how it reads so that you are stamping them the right way. See that? Nice. These are awesome. And then along with that, we are going to use um, some of the masks. And I have um, the gear masks. Here's one. This one, I don't remember which number this one is, but this is one of the gears. Oop, that glare again. Sorry. There's the gears. This one has the whole inside cut out. And then there's two other styles, too, that we'll use. This one, this one has the solid, but it has the gears just like the, the other one. And this one has gears, but it also has dots. I love the dots. Kind of like the inside of the book. You can see the dots. Um, I'm not sure how you sign up. I think they had a Facebook. Carrie will find the link, and she'll link it. Oops. Oh, dropping things. Okay, and I think we should get started. What do you think? You ready? 
think we're ready. All right, I gotta find a place to put all this stuff. <laughs> I have too much stuff on my table here. All right, let's get inky. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let me remember what the first thing was. Oh, I think we sprayed first. No, I think I, I made color first. So we'll do some of the Faber-Castell colors. And what I did is I spread out my book like this. You know, opened it up so the covers were spread across. Um, and that way I can work both the front and the back at the same time. And then, um, you know, move on from there. So we're going to layer. We're going to do lots of layers. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move my papers out of the way so I don't spray them or ink them up when, until I want to. All right. So here you can see I chose colors. Um, my color scheme kind of came from the papers I wanted. I knew I wanted orange and I knew I wanted um, kind of a bluish, but not, I didn't want a baby blue. So I picked kind of... Um, a greenish color to mix with it and I could mix some more blue I think for my demo tonight I'm gonna to add a little more blue in there so we'll use these colors these are the gelatos from Faber-Castell design memory craft and I don't know if I can show you without the glare there my camera doesn't want to focus on it there you go All right see there this is a gelato stick this one is tangerine and blueberry and metallic mint gelatos. Yeah, so Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft gelatos. So if you haven't used the gelatos yet, they are delicious. You don't eat them, don't eat them. Although my son put them on his lips and they're non-toxic, of course. But you could see they look a little bit like lip gloss. And my three-year-old taught me that the backs fit on, or the tops fit on the back so you don't lose them. <laughs> I thought that was pretty clever. He figured that out, I didn't. All right, so I'm going to start with the orange. So I'll move this one out of the way. Move this up. Okay, and what I did is just kind of randomly spread out some of the gelato. So just have fun. You know, you can decide how much you want to put on there. I just did a little in the corner. And because you can layer them and make them as thick as you want, you know, maybe you want them thinner um, so you can see more of the words, or maybe you want it really thick where you're covering up some of it. They are kind of translucent, but you could build them up and the darker ones kind of cover more. So I'm just going to decide, I don't know, I'm just going to be crazy and add color wherever. All right, so we have some orange in there. That looks good. And then we will add some of the blue Oh, well, maybe I'll add some of the I know Santa's list getting longer. You know, mine is pretty long, although I'm already getting my Christmas gift, which is the which is the new kitchen. So, you know, I guess that you have to be have to kind of be good. So we'll add some metallic in there. And there's no wrong way to use these. You can put as little or as much as you want. Now because I'm using um, contrasting colors, you have to kind of be a little careful you don't make it too muddy because um, if you use opposite colors on the color wheel, um, here's my art teacher side, if you use the opposite colors on the color wheel next to each other, they look awesome. Mixed together, you get brown. So you want to be careful that you don't use too much um, and like mix them together too much because they will kind of be brown when you mix them. And I, I did some of that on my cover. I wanted some of it overlapping to be brown because there's browns in the color scheme, but you know, I didn't want to get too carried away. And I'm going to make some... Um, more teal color by adding some blues in there. So this is just a little, just for this tonight, and making this one a little bit different. Because I can't make them perfectly the same, that's just boring. Just add a little blue in there. Of course we are going to add some water, and we're going to do a little drippage, because that's just how I roll here. All right. 
Okay, now I gotta find my brush. What do I do with my brush? I was playing with it. There it is. I'm just gonna use my big brush. All right, so we're gonna use some water. This is kind of dangerous because the computer's right here. I gotta be careful with my water cup because I am known to spill. All right, now I'm gonna drip a little bit. I'm gonna mix some together and I'm gonna drip it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Whoa, see what I mean? Oh, I better be careful. All right. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, I'm not going to spill that on my computer. That would be bad. When you get these suckers wet, they become so bright. So they brighten up, and the more water you add, the more they um, will lighten up and become more transparent. So you can really have a lot of fun with how much you add and what you want to do with it. So right now I'm just kind of getting this wet. And I might have added a little too much. That's okay. We'll drip. Drip, drip, drip. You can leave some of it. You know, not you don't have to mix them all. And you can also smudge it with your finger. The gelatos are really versatile. So if you smudge it, it kind of gives it that pastel look. You know, like, like chalk pastels. <laughs> the upstate. Yeah, I didn't think we had an accent, but then, you know, neither do people from the South. They don't think they have an accent either. We think they do. It's just we're, what we're used to, I guess. My grandparents were from the South, and they had quite the Southern accent from Texas. Oh, I like in this one. This one is very bright. Lots of bright. Yeah, the resist, we're going to use them on the resist um, canvas in a minute. Just lots of uses for Faber-Castell gelatos. These things are my favorite. I They're very portable, so you can take them anywhere, even on the plane, because you they're not liquid, so they travel beautifully. You just bring a little water brush with you, and you're good to go. I brought them to Italy when I went to Italy last summer. Oops, I'm getting them all over. I'm sorry. Um, and they travel. Awesome. So here we are dripping. Got my wipe. Wipe up my mess. I bought these at the dollar store. These little washcloths. And I use them and then I throw them out because I don't want to wash them. <laughs> so bad. So I use them until they're not usable anymore. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right, we're, we got our first layer kind of in there. I could kiss your paper. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're so silly. Kiss my paper. All right, All right I'm gonna, yeah, I went to Italy. It was fun. Well, it was kind of, my husband uh, won an award there, so we got to go. All right, I'm going to just dry this a little bit so we can do the next step. Yeah, the blue flower, isn't that pretty? That's the button that holds it together. Yeah, chat is moving really fast. We got a lot of people signed in. Yeah, I thought about that, but I really, I think it's pretty. It's just sewn on a little bit. It's just a little button. It's got a little stitch here. I think it's, yeah, I think it's pretty. It's a little feminine with all the masculine, masculine papers, you know. Okay, 
that's good enough. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do to here is we're going to use those beautiful masks. Um, and we are going to, or actually, be, maybe we'll do some stamping first. I changed my mind. Sorry. Changed my mind. So first I'm going to stamp before we do the other part. And I use the Pit Artist Pen, <clears throat> again from Faber-Castell, Design Memory Craft. Um, this is the black Big Brush, Stamper's Big Brush Pen. And I just am going to color my gears. This is from that stamp set I just showed you. The Craftsman Prima Stamp Clings. So I'm just adding some gears on here. And some parts might be a little wet, so it might bleed a little bit. You can see it intensifies when it gets a wet, it gets a little wet. This is Indian ink, India ink marker. So when it dries, it'll be permanent. But while it's wet, it can flow. So you can really have some really cool effects with it while it's wet. You know, you can make it drip and become fuzzy and more watercolor looking. And they're pretty opaque, so here it's pretty damp, so it's getting a little fuzzy. And some of it might get covered up, and that's okay. I don't mind that. I'm just adding a little more interest in here. Let's see. Move it around. Okay, just a little bit there. And I'm going to put my hand one too, the pointer. Take those off and put this one on. And that one I did just below the flower. So, kind of getting off task here. And I'm doing this first, and then I'm going to dry them. So you're going to have to be patient when you're using the, the heat gun. I use my heat gun all the time. But um, I'm going to dry it a little, and then I'll show you um, how the ink handles water. It doesn't go anywhere. It's permanent when it dries. Okay, so my little my hand there. You see where I put that? <clears throat> all right. I know the hand stamp is one of my favorites. I snagged that one right up. It's perfect. I have a little one, a little hand from another stamp company, but this one I like the size a lot better. I don't know, it's just a good size. Oh, my camera is not, not focusing. All right, so I gotta I gotta dry these a little more before we do the the sprays. Otherwise, they'll just kind of absorb in because it's so wet. And I want them to be, you know, to be the next layer on top. So I'm gonna let this dry a little. I'm bringing a bunch. <laughs> burn my fingers enough times. Alright, I think that's good. Good enough. Okay. Now, last time I was on here I showed you how to make sprays with the gelatos. Okay, and um, I can show you that again if you want, quick, or I can just do it. I made some up ahead of time, and um, so I'm just gonna use those, but if you want me to, you want me to show it? Okay, I'll show you. I'm gonna, I'm using black. 
um, cause I want black here, but I also want, um, it to have a little metallic in it. So we'll do, we'll do the silver ice in the black licorice because it's pretty intense. It comes out pretty intense. Um, but you could do any colors. You can make any colors you want because you're making your own and whatever gelatos you have, you can mix them together. It's pretty cool. So, um, you need a mini mister and I did fill up one. What did I do with that? Here it is. Of course, I put it right where I knew I needed it and uh, and of course I couldn't remember where I put it. <laughs> All right. And a paper plate or some kind of flexible dish, you know, something you can pour it back in here with. Okay, so you take this, this is the fun part. Well, it's all fun, so there's no not fun part. And I'm gonna start with the silver because it's lighter and you can see it before I do the black. Basically, I just draw on the plate. You could um, use a palette knife and kind of cut off a little bit and then mash it around and get it um, kind of, uh, you know, mashed down. I don't know what the technical word is. Mashed. Mashing. But I'm just making a little bit, so I'm going to just color this. And I just want it metallic-y. See how it's getting kind of on the edge because I rolled it up a little too high? But that's good because we want that. Okay, so I colored silver. Now I'm going to use the black. This is the black licorice. And you just, like a little kid, you just color. Color your plate. Oops. Smooshing, smooshing. I think smooshing is the word. You were going to smoosh. That is totally a word I would use. Yes. Smooshing. I think I have used that word in my classroom before. Smooshing. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Still adding. Okay, so you add as much as you want. The more you add, the more intense your color will be. So if you're, you know, wanting a really bright color, you will smoosh more. You will smoosh it. Okay. Now um, I'm going to pour the water. I filled this up and I'm going to pour the water onto my plate. Okay. It's the same amount of water that goes in here. And then I'm going to slosh it around. So smooshing and then sloshing. Boy, I sound like I'm from somewhere crazy. Wow. Smooshing and sloshing. So that you could use your brush to kind of help it along, but look, it's becoming all liquidy because it's water soluble. So it's going to just liquefy, liquefy. Am I drunk? No, I'm not drunk. I haven't had anything to drink today, although I have felt like I needed it after teaching first and second grade this morning. That was quite crazy. We had a half day today and the kids were all wound up. Plus, it's a full moon. So I totally believe that that affects little kids. Smooshing and slashing. Yes, and I need wine. I should have had wine while I was doing this class. That would have been perfect, but do not. I just have water. All right, now here's the part that I always screw up and I, I end up with it all over the place. I'm going straight to heaven, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to bend my plate a little bit so that I have a little pour spout. So I don't get it everywhere, which I probably will get it everywhere anyway. And up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, everywhere. See what I mean? I am just making a mess. But you pour it back in there. Apparently this isn't the perfect plate to do that. I think I did this the last time I made a mess. Anyway, it's good enough. See? My rag comes in handy. Just clean it right up. No problem. Wiping away. And I have a black mat, so you won't even be able to tell that I spilled black all over there. All right, and there's your spray. Now I've got my spray, and it's a metallic black now. Okay, and before I do spray, I will show you what it looks like. So let me, I'm going to use the packaging here. Maybe I'll use it on something later. But on the fabric, we are going to... I am going to use, let me see, uh, I think I will use this one, the frame, because I haven't used that one yet. 
All right, so I have my frame here, and I will spray to show you what my the one I just made, what it looks like. Get it going. All right, and these are this is your gelato spray. So I did it pretty thick on there. Quite a lot of layers. There it is. So you can make any colors you want if you have the gelatos, and they last a long time. So you can make lots and lots of sprays if you have mini misters, and um, you know, or find a mister at oops, snag, a mister at um, you know the travel section in Target or Walmart or whatever, and make yourself some mists, and then you can you know make new ones when you're bored of those. So it's pretty neat. Okay. So now I'm going to do this on my um, booklet now, my book. All right, ready? Here we go. Um, but I think I'm going to use the one with the dots. Because that's the one I think I used before. And I really like that. So we'll use the dotted one. Because I don't want it to be covering up everything. I just want some black accent yeah and we just made our own shimmery one because they don't have a black shimmery one yet they have um, a two pack of these two you can get the gold and the silver so what I do is when I want to make a, a color they don't have if I don't have the the shimmery one the silver you can mix with cool colors like blue purples and greens and you'll get a shimmery version of that. It doesn't change the color. It won't change it very much. And this is the gold, and you can use that with the warm colors, like reds, oranges, and yellows, and then you'll have a shimmery version of those. So this is a good pack. This is the gold, champagne, and silver ice. It sounds like New Year's, like some kind of drink. Silver ice and champ. So look at gold champagne. Oh, love that. All right. Here we go. I'm gonna, oops, spray myself. Make sure the nozzle is pointing away from you, not mm -hmm. at you. Um, you could add some pearls, some of the, um, what do they call that? Perfect pearls? You could, yes. You could add some of this to this to make it even more sparkly, but I think the gelatos, the metallic gelatos, have a lot of sparkle on them to begin with, so I think that works really well. But yes, you could mix some powdery sparkle in there if you would like. All right, I did the back of this. Now, I have gelato spray that's settled on this, and I hate to waste that. I hate to. I'm kind of, um, you know, I don't like to waste it. So I'm going to turn this over, and I am going to stamp this on our first white page, okay? Because I don't want to waste it. I want to use it. So I'm just stamping it on here and rubbing a little bit. Yeah, there we go, okay? And it's going to be kind of watercolory. You get the, the reverse. You get the positive image instead of the negative image that we sprayed through. So the mask became a stamp. Pretty cool, right? You can use it double, a double duty. Double, double. All right, so that is that. And I'm gonna dry this before I flip it back over and do the front cover. You guys are just typing fast and furious. It does get messy, and I love my little heat gun. This is the second one I've gone through mm -hmm. in six months, so. And these dry really fast, and they will be pretty much permanent. I mean, I wouldn't run them through the wash, but they are, um, they're fairly permanent on, uh, they're permanent on paper, definitely permanent. They won't come off. 
All right, the front. We're going to do the front. And then we're going to do some modeling paste. Oh, you guys, I love modeling paste so much. You are going to have, if you haven't used light modeling paste before, you will love it. Okay. So I made just about enough to do that layer and um, now I can switch that mini mister to a different color because I you know I might want to do something different with it. I may use wanted to use a different color so I could do that. Now I have um, some tags here. I think I'm gonna stamp on there. We can add those later too. Again I don't want to waste. I hate wasting. And I got a little tag. Put that aside. I got this idea from um, Dina Wakely. She does this too because she's like me. She doesn't like to waste her spray on her mask. And so I started collecting st collecting uh, tags like she does. I thought that was brilliant. I used to just stamp it in a journal. But then I had a whole bunch of background pages and I didn't really do much with them. I wish I could have, you know, cut them out and cut them up. So the tags are perfect because I can cut them up or I can add them in anytime I want. All right. I'm going to dry this a little bit more. Okay, modeling paste. Here's the modeling paste. I ha I used golden on the first one, but I ran out. I had a little bottle and I ran out of it. So I needed something quick and I went and got um, the Liquitex light modeling paste, which is pretty good. It works pretty much the same. Um, I think golden's a better brand just because um, I'm partial to it in local. Golden isn't very far from us. They're, they're a factory. Okay, so we're going to use a little bit of this with a palette knife. But you could use a popsicle stick if you wanted to. Either if you don't have a palette knife, popsicle stick or tongue depressor or stick of some sort will work. All right, so let's see. I'm going to use this one again. Oh, really, Matt? My husband is being obnoxious. All right, let's see, I'm gonna do it this way. You want your stencil to lay flat, okay? So it can't be like, it can't be lifting up somewhere because it then the modeling paste will get underneath it. Okay, so this is the modeling paste. It looks like frosting. So, oops, can you see? It looks like whipped frosting. And you just smush it right over, smoosh it. Just like you're frosting a cupcake. And push it through the stencil. I even I want it to go over the edge of the stencil too, around the edge, because then I get the def definition of these gears. Otherwise it just you'll just get the middle. You won't get the outside edge. And you can build it up, you can make it pretty thick. I'm kind of scraping off the extra on top. The thicker it is, the longer it takes to dry. So just be aware of that. Dry time. All right. And then save the extra. So scrape that back in there. Okay. And you can lift straight up and you'll get your design. I'll hold that up so you can see it at the edge. You see that? Maybe I can turn it so you can see the texture. It's kind of thin. I didn't make it very thick on that one. So maybe I'll try to make a thicker one. So you can scrape off the extra and then do it again. You want to wash these off right away, um, you know, or as soon as possible, or wipe them off with baby wipes or something, 
before um, they dry because once the modeling paste dries it's really a big pain in the butt to get it off of the stencil so just a word of warning that you want to get it off of there when you're done you can I use a old toothbrush to get inside the little crevices okay I'm gonna put this on the back cover and I'm gonna make this one a little thicker because I'm not adding anything else to the back cover except for these layers at least not yet I'm gonna lay load it up there and I love these dots so I'm gonna get that on there pretty good too you can color your own modeling paste too, and I did that inside. I'll show you the page I did that on. Um, you can add the gelatos to the modeling paste and mix it up and then spread it, and you'll have your own colored modeling paste. So I can show you that in a little bit too. All right. Lift that up. And there we go. Maybe that one you can see a little more the gears and the dots. Yeah, why don't I show you that right now? I'll show you that now. Since we have the, the modeling paste out and since I have to let it dry a little bit, I'll show that to you. So what I do is, kind of like my plate, let's see how I'm scraping that off of there. Um, what I do is I take a bunch of the modeling paste that I want to color, you try to, you know, get the amount that you want. And I put it on my craft mat. It's easier to see when you have like a color or, you know, a different colored craft mat. This one's hard to see. But I really like, um, how about, we'll do a metallic, we'll do the metallic mint color. And I'm just going to color this. And I might need a darker color. Let's see. Or maybe I'll make an aqua color. I want lime and blueberry. And then we'll add metallic to it. So color it on your craft mat, and it's very hard to see, I know, on the camera, sorry. I will show you. Okay, and you you just keep adding until you know, until you get it, the color you want. And I'm just going to use my craft knife, or my palette knife, to scrape it and mix it. It's like mixing frosting. It's like coloring frosting. That's really all it is. It's that easy. And you can see it's kind of already starting. So I just keep scraping it off and mixing it back in there and you know until you get it the color you want and I think I want a little more blue in there this is um, called light modeling paste it's uh they have modeling paste don't get modeling paste get light modeling paste just um, as an art teacher the modeling paste is meant for something like a um, a surface that's not going to be bendable, not a flexible surface, because it will crack off. But the light modeling paste is much lighter and it will, um, it's more flexible. So you can use it on papers and canvas and um, pretty much anything that's bendable. So this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is what you want, the light modeling paste. And this, I don't remember what this cost me. At Hobby Lobby, I think I had a coupon too. It was like six dollars or seven dollars, but I paid less because I had a coupon. So Golden is much more expensive, but they are full. It's like the creme de la creme of modeling paste. Awesome. Okay, so you can see the color. Can you see it? I'll lift it up so you can see. It. I'm just mixing it a little better here. Pardon me. Okay, see? Color there. Yeah, it's like a bluish, like a um, blue green. My lighting in here is really needs adjusting, needs new light bulbs, better light bulbs than these. These are a little too warm and it bugs me. What did I do? Mm -hmm. Oh, time check. Okay, so I'm just, I'll just show you what this looks like quick. Quick. Quickly. 
There's the blue on top of the background. So it's the modeling paste. Alrighty. Cool. Okay, we gotta get moving here. I'm gonna start layering my other stuff on here because I think it's dry enough. Oops, dropping things everywhere. Okay, let me grab my papers. All right, so we did our mediums, and our next layers are going to be the paper layers. So, oh, it is still a little wet. Oops. You can kind of brush it a little bit. I'm just going to brush it, get it a little drier. Don't hold the heat gun too close for too long because it'll bubble. Unless you want it to bubble. Which, on occasion, I have wanted it to bubble, but you do want to, like, move it around a lot. Okay. Let's see. Yep, that's good. Alright. So, I am going to cut out um, a piece of this with my trimmer. And... I'm going to use the widgets, and I want about, um, let me think, how much I was, I'll give you the measurements, it was, oops, mm -hmm. it was three and a half by, about three and a half, so it's about a square, three and a half by three and a half. Desk, I need a bigger desk. It is big, but I need a bigger desk, more room. I think I would just clog it up in here if I had a bigger desk. More, more room, more stuff, right? Okay, so three and a half by three and a half. That way there's no wrong way to cut it. Okay, so there's the three and a half by three and a half. And I need to cut out my word, so I'm going to cut this in half. And I need this strip too, this striped strip from this engineer paper. This striped one. Okay, so I need that one. It's done with that. And I used pure, but maybe I'll put inspire me on this one so I can just do that with the scissors um, inspire me there we go so you can cut out any word you want I did pure pure strong Strong, something like that, and then I'm going to need these tags, these tickets, which I will cut out in a minute. What else did I need? I think that was it because the other thing is the journaling tag, and we will use that too. Oh, I'm gonna stab myself with this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then some of the gears that you could cut out. Um, my craft mat, that's, I, I don't know where my craft mat is from. I ordered it online and um, all I did was Google black, a non-stick craft mat. And I found a company that sells a black non-stick craft mat. And they have a little demo video and of course I cannot remember where that is from. I should have that written down somewhere because I've had a couple people ask me. And I probably have it in my history somewhere. But um, if you Google black, because I wanted a black one for, you know, when I'm demoing. I like the black backdrop background better. But um, sometimes it's a pain when you're doing the colors because you can't really see them. So then I like my good old Tim Holtz one. Or Ranger one, I guess it would be. 
Okay, so there's my tickets. I wanted the two tickets and the journaling tag that we did. All right, what else? Oh, we got to cut out some of these. I think I did a medium size one. So I think it was just this one. But you could cut out, oh, you could cut out as many as you want. And I'm not going to be fussy cutting it. I'm just going to go around the circle. Because we're running short on time here. I talk too much. There we go. What else? Alrighty. I think we can start layering, ladies and gentlemen. If we have any gentlemen. I'm not sure if we have gentlemen on here right now. Okay. Now I'm going to cut... And we're going to use mm -mm. one of um, my favorite tools, this the Prima um, Distress Tool. This is an awesome tool. It's like five tools in one. And um, I know Carrie ha uses hers too. And I love it to just rough up the edges. And it has like a sandpaper side and this raspy side and this, the you know, the one that you can use the edger, edge distressor. Yeah, it's a good tool. And this one I love because it's so, I don't have to carry so many tools, just all in one. And I like how I can hold it. It's a nice grip to it. And then just doing a ribbon edge. I learned this one from Carrie too. I remember sitting at a crop with her doing these. She was doing this ribbon edge and I said, oh, I love that. I'm going to try that. Oh, you left it? Bummer. All right. So this is going to go on the bottom. And I put this one right along the edge. Oops, this is the front right here. So this one kind of went here, but I kind of crinkled it up a little. I like it when it's a little more not so pretty, not so perfect. Oh, for her display. Oh, you're nice. I hope you got another one. So I smushed it up a little bit. And then this thing. Oh, this is so cute. I, you know what? I thought I cut it, but I didn't. I lied. You could cut it and then spread it apart if you wanted it wider. But I think I just left it. And I layered it on top. These I'm going to pop up. And I'm going to use another shameless plug. Um, because I did a Prima one the other night. I did um, from Helmar. I'm on their educator team too, and I did uh, a Ustream on Tuesday making a little tin um, with Prima papers, with Rosarian. So I was plugging Prima for them, and now I'm plugging Helmar for Prima. Uh -huh. So these are my, one of my favorite pop zap dots. They pop up everything. So I have the big ones, and I like that they're black because the white ones show sometimes, and I don't want that. I'm going to just press up this edge too because we're going to use this next. Oh, I'm like off camera here. Let me move this up a little. There you go. Can you see me? I have to have the black mat and the dots. Yes. Zap dots. The black mat, I will find out. i got to find out where it is from. I can't remember. I'll look in my history. But if I do it now, I'll accidentally turn off the recording because I did that during the Helmar one. <laughs> I turned it off. I had to turn it back on. It really stunk. I was not very happy with myself. So right now I'm just going to layer these on and show you the order. And then this little guy goes under here. Like that is that. And um, 
I had the tickets coming out the top. And I popped one of those up too. So I'm just going to put one here. And then this one got popped up like this. So we'll pop those up too. And then I added some buttons and some bling. So we'll get those ready. And a ribbon. This is um, another thing, another addiction that I have now. Thanks to Carrie. Addiction. Oh, I'm not, I know, I'm not inking the edges. Sorry. I could ink the edges. I could do that. Yes, Carrie, I, Carrie and I met at a crop at a, our local scrapbook store. And um, it's kind of funny because we've been, she, she cracked me right the heck up, let me tell you. And I have loved, I haven't seen her a lot lately. So we haven't gotten together very much lately. But we try to get together once a month with our girls. And we're going to see Breaking Dawn too soon. All right, so I'm going to tie the little ribbon around. Before I start gluing all this down, I tied this around the edge of the square. And I'm not very good at doing this, you know, under camera here, so forgive me. It's not pretty, but we'll just do it. And I always, there's always some cursing involved because I, it always lets go. I'll try not to curse on camera. And then I'll have to trim it. I always cut it too big. I always cut it too big. And then I waste half of it. Oh well. See? Ugh. It's just not working. There we go. Pretty, pretty. Good enough, right? It's pretty. Oh, Skyfall. I haven't seen that yet either. You guys have seen all sorts of stuff. All right, now let's glue these down. So I'm going to move this off and we'll glue this down. I'm using, you know, my sticky glue. This is the 450 quick dry adhesive from Helmar. Great on fabrics. Great on anything. And it grabs hold fast. Okay, then we pop up my pop my zap dots here. All oh, my parents saw Lincoln. They said it was awesome. They said, "Oh yeah, give yourself a headache with it." Oh. They said it was amazing. Yeah, that I, I, ah, oh, he dies in the end. I think we all knew that from history class, but my parents said that every American, sh everybody should see it, that it was that good. Steven Spielberg, I guess, just did an amazing job. All right, I'm going to layer this one a little farther down here because I want some of the gears to pop out. So there we go with that. Then we'll glue one of these tags down. And here. And we'll pop this one up. A couple more pop dots. Yeah, we're from the burbs. The burbs. We're not city girls. Everybody thinks we're from the city. We're not. No, I'm in Liverpool, silly. Liverpool. There we go. And pop these up too. I'm just using a lot. Oops. See? We haven't seen each other in a while, apparently. It's been too long.
I think it's been since CHA. Ugh, that's too long. Peeling off the backs of these. Oh no! There we go. We should do a show. Well, we kind of are doing a show together, but we should be in a show together together. Like, at the same time, in the same place. Maybe we should get all the girls together and do it. Like, all of our friends, because they're... That we would have a big riot. It would be crazy fun. That would be a real hoop. And we could have wine, maybe. We could have wine, and then I'll do something crazy. I don't know. Something like that. Oh, Niagara Falls. Marlene, you should come down. You should come down and visit. I want to go to Niagara on the lake sometime, too. So, I don't know if that's, I know that's not too far from you. I've been, I used to go there in the summer with some other girlfriends, and that is an awesome place. Wine. Okay. Um, title. But first, yeah, I think I want to do some of those gears. Here's the gears. Let's open that thing out. Up. Oh. Man, that's stuck in there. There we go. This is pretty. Look at that. It's got, it looks like clouds. It's so pretty. I'm going to keep that. Yeah. My hoarding has begun. Um, I used, let's see, what did I want to use? I think I want to use this one, this little one, little gear, and the big gear, the big gear, there we go, do that, aren't these cool, I love them. Where did I put the thing? There we go. And they have this little inset. Keeps it right in there. All right, we got lots more to put on here. We got some flowers. Let me get some of my flowers out. How about an orange flower or the red one? Ooh. Orange one's pretty. Oh, I like that. Oh, I'm keep sliding off here. There's an orange one here. No more red. Okay. What? What do we have? We have leaves. We've got flowers. Leaves and flowers. All right. I want this leaf on here. And we will have a red leaf. No? Nah. I think one's good right now. Black. I like the black flowers. Love those. And the blue. Oh, yeah. That's good. The blue and the black. You know, Carrie, how are we doing here? Oh my gosh, you saw that guy walking across the falls? What What a crazy guy. Why would you do that? That's crazy. I guess just to do it, but that might be the last thing you do. It's not. I couldn't do that. No way. All right. What word do we want? Let me see. Sweet love. What did I put on here? You, you, to me. Hmm. These are cute. I think I will do sweet. No. It's got to read the right way. I think I will do um, you, you know, me. Me. Because I did you on the other one. Did you find it? 
Did you find that black mat? You got to share now where where you found it. Because now I, it's driving me crazy where I can't remember where I find it. Where I got it. You got the link. All right. Cool. All right. And then I'm going to use some of the resist canvas. Uh, I will do some gears from the resist canvas. Or I could do a clock. I think I want to do gears. I like the gears. Gears are awesome. And these just have little things that pop right out. That's a cute one. That'll go cute behind there. I can find. They have a whole bunch of them in here. These have little oval ones. It's like confetti. I'm keeping it for confetti. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to keep it for confetti. It's silly. Yeah, creative art lifestyle. That's it. That's where I got it. You're good. And it was really reasonably priced, I thought, for a mat. Very reasonably priced. I liked it. And it's a very nice one. It does not, nothing sticks to it. It is very non-stick. Very good. Okay. What, I think I'm just going to do the gears. I'm going to do one gold. So I'm just going to color it. Gold. Gelato. Maybe I can make it look patinaed. I'll add a little blue. Or, let me see, bluish color? No, boysenberry. Maybe some boysenberry. You could also color your mat and then put the color on the gear, like a wash. That way you can control where you put it. And the gold is very metallic-y. Kind of darkens up in the water a little bit too. Making a big mess. <clears throat> I think I want that behind here. Oh, I think it needs more color. It's just not enough. See, while it's wet, I can go right back in and add more color to it. Some green, some blue. And it's still damp, so I can mix it. Now it looks more like a aged metal, sort of. Aged metal. I think I can get away with that, right? Like a patina. That's pretty. Okay. I'll glue that down. Glue my flowers. This one is really cool. It's like the paper from the craftsman line. Can you see that? I don't know if it's going to focus on it. Focus. Here. It's good focusing when I focus, but it doesn't like it when it has something in the background that it likes more than what it's in the foreground. Thank you, Carrie. That's a compliment coming from you. Big compliment. I'm just sticking some of this glue on here, on the metal. It'll work on there. I could also stitch it on too if that, you know, if I didn't think it would hold, but it does hold. Oh, glue boogers. It's gorge. <laughs> well, I can't take that away from Drew. That's Drew's word. But thank mm -hmm. you. Oh, can't see my phone. Um, on the resist I used, oh, I did a combination. I started with gold. I added some blueberry. And then I added some metallic mint. 
and this makes the blue green kind of patina look so I layered them on there I wanted like a aged metal look some buttons just gonna take them all out buttons I will do the create button under here create and hmm. I love these little buttons here. Let's see, I think I want do this one. I think I did there. I think I need a bigger one under there. Mm -hmm. This one. It doesn't show up. Do a little one under here too. There. Yes. Heat gun, paints, everything. Yep, it's kinda it's not heat proof, but it's like heat resistant. Yep, just like the Ranger one. And you could glue right on it. Like you could put glue right directly on it and it'll wash right off. It doesn't stick. It's fabulous. And I have the title. Oh, the title. I forgot the title. Yeah, the, the mm -hmm. silicone ones work good, too. Mm-hmm. I'm just dumping these out because I can't find the letters all mixed in there. Here's the note cards that come in there. Aren't they cool? Those are really nice. You can use them with it or without. ST find my S T R O oops this one N where's the N? That's N G strong strong and I used pure last time but we'll use inspire me and my and then I'm just going to do a little ribbon edge on that one too. Just to stick it in there. Alright. I think I'm adding too much too fast here. Good thing I didn't put too much glue on there. Which I love the noise it makes. It's kind of like my husband it makes that kind of noise. I know I have the Tattered Angels pink mat too. It's so big though, like I can't, ugh. It just drives me crazy. It's too big. Makes me a little nuts. So I, I like the size one. This one covers my table pretty nicely. But I take my Tattered Angels one to, um, you know, when I teach, when I'm teaching, I need more flowers on here. I think this one needs to move up a little bit. I like that this glue gives me a little bit of working time. Okay. And strong is going to be this Oh, and then N and G are on the map here. There we go. So how's it looking? You know, like in this is pretty easy. It's just a lot of, a lot of layers, a lot of textures, a lot of add-on. You know, you just keep layering, keep adding. Carrie is the queen of layering. She does an awesome job layering. Sometimes I get a little carried away. I add too many layers. Lots of color. 
I love lots of color. Oops. I'm doing this upside down too. I have to let you know that I just realized it's upside down and I'm hoping I'm spelling things right because that would be kind of embarrassing if I'm putting strong on the wrong way. Oh yeah, the cardboard cuts. Oh, I got one the other day. That hurts. Yeah, hurt, 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 hurts. Love this little gear that's gonna get tucked right in there. And that flower. All right. Well. We're almost done with the front cover here. I went backwards too, yeah. I know, it's crazy. I'm good. I must be good, right? Oh, I forgot to bling. Yeah, there's a lot of pieces on this front cover, but, you know, if you're doing your own, you don't have to add as many. I love all these products, so I just keep layering them on. All right, bling, bling, bling. These are so pretty. They're so little and delicate and sparkly. I just think they're awesome. I'm gonna put these right here. Oh, I didn't even glue that button in there. Oops. Stick that button in there. Well, I can put the bling over it a little bit. But it's tucked in there. I'm talking to myself. There we go. And. I think I want a big curly one over there at the bottom. Okay. You could even do a few of these bling blinglings. Oops. I think I want this one. Yeah, that's starting to look. See, sometimes I just get a little too carried away. I'm not sure if I'm overdoing it. I just love all this stuff. Hmm. I'm going to put this one. How about I'll put this one like down here. Maybe in that circle. Okay, we're done with that front cover. All right, I'm going to show you one more thing before we run out of time. Um, on the inside cover. Let me just make sure all this is glued down. Yep. Okay, there we go. It's brighter than my first one. I like it. Um, let me show you what I did in here before I, it's easier for me to. Now I did the inside covers too um, with the sprays and the gelatos. Yeah, that's why I get mine done because when they look bad then I can just go ahead and redone. And then um, I started working on the inside. So here's my front page. And I just cut up some papers and did some stamping. Um, this was the stamping of the extra mist and then made a few more ribbons, added more bling in here. So I'm going to do something in here like journaling or something. And then there's the, this is the colored um, 
modeling paste. I made it black. So I layered those. Over here I did some of the drywall tape. This is a book page back here I layered on. Now this is what I want to show you. This was fun. And this is that um, page here. I don't know if I can find it real quick. This one. So this is what it started out as. And this is what I did. So there's sort of your inking edges. Sort of. And um, this is actually an image transfer. Um, and what I did is I put I put gesso down. So I'll do it. It's not that. It doesn't take that. Well, it does take long because you have to let it dry. But I'll kind of walk you through the first part. And what I did is I just took my... Um, and, and what I'm using is a gesso... But this is, I found an image online, this girl with her messy hair, and I love this. Yeah, it's an image transfer. So I took this image, I printed it out, and then I took it to Staples, and I made a Xerox copy. You need to have a Xerox copy or a um, magazine picture, if you can't get to the Xerox. Um, a magazine picture or, um, uh, I'm trying to think what else something that's been printed with toner okay it has to be something with toner you can't print it um with an inkjet printer okay no inkjet because it just smudges and smears everywhere you need a toner based copy so magazines are are toner based um newspapers are toner based and xerox is a toner based okay or a laser printer laser printer would be a toner based Okay, so what I did is I, I knew I wanted it to go, make sure my book's the right side up. Yeah, I want it to go this way. So I'm going to put gesso on here first. And this is um, cheap gesso, but it's kind of thick. This is Liquitex gesso. And I brush that on there. As evenly, you want an even coat. Not gloppy, not big globs. And I didn't cover the whole tag. I just want to cover as much as the space will allow. And you want it to be as even as possible. So I tend to want to use um, a foam brush, but of course I can't find my foam brush around here. Oh, I do have one right here. Here's the foam. Okay, so you want it to be smooth because if you leave brush strokes, your image will have brush strokes. Which is okay if you're doing that and you want it to look like that. Okay, but just smooth, smooth it out. I'm gonna make it look a little messier here. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my image and I'm gonna put it face down into the gesso. Make sure you put it where you want it. And I'm gonna burnish it with my finger just going to burnish it. You don't want it to move. You want it to stay where you put it and you're going to really rub it on there. Okay, so you want it rub it. Oh, packing tape transfers. Yes. Gel medium. Any acrylic um, or plastic based paint will work. So you can use acrylic. You can use gel medium. Um, crackle paste. You could use um, gesso. That's what I'm using right now multi-medium for any of any of Claudine's yep because they're all um, acrylic base or plastic base all right the key is letting this dry before you peel off the paper backing so I'm, I'm just burnishing this really well and you could use a bone folder um, sometimes I use my plastic ruler just to get the bubbles out and smooth it in there. Okay, you want the image to be in there well. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. Use my distress tool. Oh, that's a great idea, Carrie. Burnish it with the distress tool. Fantastic. Why didn't I think of that? You're welcome. Hey, that's what I do. I love, I love all these techniques. 
so that's what I'd like to share. Now it's better if you let it dry on its own. I think it works better. But basically what I did, and I'll get my other one out here, is when it's dry, when it's completely dry, completely, like not damp at all, and you are going to spritz on some water over the, the paper part. Spritz on some water when it's all dry. And then you're going to take your finger and you're going to rub it. And the paper pulp will come off. So I rub this. Be careful you don't rub too much. Because if you rub too much, you'll rub away your image. I like how it distresses it a little bit. But you don't want to rub it away completely. You know, because sometimes you get a little carried away and you rub the whole paper off. But you, you want to rub the paper pulp off, not the image. The image will transfer into the gesso or the acrylic or whatever. But you can see on this one... Um, that there's a line down here that was part of a brush stroke and I, I might have scratched it when I was burnishing or something and that's how it transferred so it left a line there which is okay I like that you could see some of the paper pulp showing because I didn't rub away all of it completely but then I just added my gears and my buttons and my little um, bling and bulb on there to decorate her little steampunk girl and then I edged it with um, some gelato and big brush marker around the edge to ink the edges. So there's your inky edge. And then um, I stamped with the Prima Press. And um, so I did the create and imagine. So create. This is what it looks like when it, look at the letters that are like perfectly spaced. Create right there. So yeah, a little feminine added to the to the mix of the masculine part. But this is um this this is the image transfer. So it's a lot of fun to use any image that you want. I think um, images with high contrast work the best. Like you get a lot of darks and lights, and of course the light inks um, when they're toner based. There's no white toner, so the white is actually the white of the paper. That they printed it on so it will be see-through so if you have an image that has whites like um, I did one I don't have it in front of me but I had one where I did a house and the windows were light they were white um, and the windows didn't transfer just the window panes so whatever I did it on book on um, no, it wasn't a book page it was uh, the printed canvas the book page printed canvas that Donna had a while ago um, I did it on that and I, I did the gel medium so you could see through it. So any of the white areas would be a um, see-through and you could see the text through it. So it was kind of fun. A different technique. Alright, so um, I'm not going to do this one right now because it's not dry and it'll just, it won't work and then I'll be disappointed that I didn't get to show you a working one. You'll you'll think I'm a liar that it didn't really work, but it do, it does work. You just have to let it dry. All right, any questions for me? Because I think I've run out of time, and I've talked a long time here. But I hope you enjoyed this, and um, I know I had fun showing you all these techniques, and I, I always love coming on. Um, on these you streams because I get to actually talk with people and they can ask questions and I love like when I do something and somebody goes oh but you could do that or you know and then we learn from each other so that's fun ah thanks well thank you good night some of you are are heading out I'm gonna pan up so you can see me in my late night glory here Night, Lisa. I'm glad you learned so much. I love teaching all this. That's why I became an art teacher, so that I could teach everybody fun stuff like this. And I do journaling with my kids at school, too, and they they have so much fun. Everybody likes that. Oh, I do look cozy. I know. This is my cozy, very warm. It's cold here, <laughs> so I have to keep warm. 
I don't like being cold. My hair always looks great. Oh, well, you're very kind. It's It was looking good earlier, but now... Mm, it's been a long day. And tomorrow's Friday. For my nails. Oh, my nails are so silly. Really, it's like, you know, I know that they will, um, you know, if I break them, I can fix them. I hate having stubby, yucky looking nails. But they're much, they're kind of a pain because they get in the way sometimes. <laughs> or I can use them as tools. Like when I'm doing my clay, I can use them as a tool, smoothing tool. It's kind of crazy. Well, my, you know, my vanity. Snow White! You're Snow White. You're a winner. Four 10 hour days? What do you do, Sue? You need a break. Yeah. It's Friday, and I hope you're going to do something scrappy and fun. Cleaning up my mess here. I'm going to um, stop the recording. And I will stay on to chat for people, but I'm going to stop the recording now, okay? I'm, I'm still going to be...